Well, I've got 502, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, open the meeting. And um, I haven't gotten an email about any past agenda, um, meeting minutes. Is anybody else? Nope. Okay. Um, so, nor, uh, nor have any of the ones we approved been posted. Okay. Um, I did check the permit board today and um, the farmers cooperative or whatever it is down on um, Long Plain Road is looking for a permit to add uh, an outside freezer 60 by 80 feet or something like that. Um, it just showed up today. And I would think that in the industrial zone, um, and actually, actually that's commercial industrial, that the only thing we would care about really would be side uh, setbacks, is that right? Um. Are there drainage issues? I don't think so. I, I haven't been in the yard there, but I mean, it's certainly um, on, the, on the aerial photographs, it doesn't look like there's any problems at all. No, it's pretty sandy right there. Yeah. So I think if you guys uh, think uh, agree with me, I think I'll just give Jim a call and say that if he's got a, uh, a site plan, we'd just take a look at it and um, rather than require a, a review or we could uh, advise them to uh, that they apply for a, a waiver of review. What are they going to use this for? The building they want it on because there's, a but, there's no abutters on the back side or on the, well, actually there are people that live at Sanderson's in the city. Yeah, they're not in Whaley, though. Yes, they are. Whaley goes up past the... She's thinking about the... I'm thinking um, Fairview store. Farm Workers. Sorry, Sanderson Farm. Right. Um, and there's the small house on the other side, and there's people across the street in the duplex. Just what that's what, going to, what part of the building they're putting it on. Yeah. What are they going to use this freezer for? I mean, other than... <laughs> storing frozen stuff but, but slaughtering the, your own quick <laughs> well i was, if they're not intending to slaughter are they i don't think so hold on a second i'll uh because that that would be a that would be a change of use okay it says um adding a 40 by 80 foot addition to house a cooler A cooler. But I mean, that could be feed for young animals. That could be other feed things. I mean, I don't know what they'd be. And feed for the animals that they're housing, because they usually house them, a lot of them more than one, sometimes more than overnight. Okay. So that would be. No, no, no that, that's, that's the uh, livestock cooperative you're thinking about. This oh, this is the, isn't that? This is the one on the other side of the street. Oh, the cemetery. PVGA, right. oh. Sarah. Gotcha. I should know that one too. <laughs> yeah. M Margaret I, says it's just cold storage for produce. Yeah. Yeah. They got a really big grant. Yeah. And I mean, that is not a change of use by any means. No, no. No, it's just a, um, an addition to the existing building. No, I think you're right. We don't, we could, we don't need to see it. Okay. Well, I'll talk to Jim about it and make sure that it's not in, it's not too close to any of the, the property lines. That would be the only thing I would be concerned about. Anybody got anything else for other? I did not make it down to pick up mail today. Mary, we were talking about a proposed cooler. Do you have addition? Do you have the address, Don? Um, 370, I think. Hold on. Yeah, 
Yeah, 370 Long Plain Road. 370 Long Plain. And what did you mean by cooler? They applied for a, a building permit to add a small addition to the building, 40 by 80, to house a cooler, which is to cool vegetables and so forth. So th this is already a, an agricultural building, or that's not a house, or no, it's it's in the um, commercial industrial zone. There's already two very large commercial coolers there, and this would be a third. I think only two now. What's the name of the party? Pioneer Valley Growers Association (PVGA). Okay. So this was just a preliminary discussion about it. Yeah, I I I check the um, new building permits every week, and this was just showed up today. We informally concluded we don't need a site plan review if we're not offered one. <laughs> Oh, well, we've got seven minutes before the public hearing. Do you want to uh, move Keith around, get him up and done? Or at least get started on that, that discussion? Sure. Sure. That's everybody that's uh, concerned is here. So, Keith, you muted. Yeah, I'm here. Do you want me to just go over what I'm doing? Is that what you're asking? Yep. I'm looking, and as, when I looked at the, the zoning bylaws, the, my interpretation was, you know, that I could have larger than a two square foot sign. There's no, at my sugar house, which is a business, it's registered as in the town of Waitley as a business, and there's no residence there. And so I don't consider it to be a, you know, a home occupied business because there's no house. It's not residential there. Grant you it's in residential agriculture zoning, but there's no residence there. Um, so anyways, the, the way I was looking at it is the regulations allow for up to 12 square feet. And my proposal was to put in a um, eight, maybe it's um, 30 inches by four. So two and a half by four. And so when I went to the, you know, the zoning, I mean, to the building inspector, he was um, wanted clarification. And so obviously he contacted planning board and here we are. So I have to recuse myself because Keith's my good buddy cousin. I sent around some language from the state bylaws with the agricultural exemption to zoning. And his case sugar house is, is a, um, well, in, we, the phrase we use is a farm stand. I mean, he's selling farm products that on land that he controls and more than the 25% limit. And as far as the way I read the, the state bylaw, zoning can't, can't uh, something like inordinately regulate a structure and a sign in our bylaws is a structure. I don't think we could regulate a sign anyway. I think it's exempt is what I'm trying to say. I guess I'll just say that it looked to me that the a, a, um, a sugar house is called out in the bylaws as an agricultural use. There's, you know, my interpretation is that there's a peculiar bug in the bylaw and that the sign regulations speak to residential signs and commercial and industrial signs, but don't say anything about 
agricultural signs. Um, I think that's because they can't. <laughs> yeah, may, so, so maybe. Uh, and, but I would assume that that doesn't mean that a sign of any size is permitted. That I like 50 square feet, a billboard. Not, not that I think this is a problem here. I guess really, oh, I'm just trying to, what, where I was going with this is that I, I liked the idea of treating the agricultural use as comparable to commercial and industrial use for this particular case. And I think the other thing we have in this town is the precedent of say 5J and down the street for me, the Happy Valley Organics has another sign. So this all seems okay to me. Though it seems like there's a gap in the our bylaws and maybe as Judy points out, that gap exists because we can't, and there's nothing that Keith has proposed that gives me any concern, even if we could. Very well said. I will uh, tell Jim Hawkins then that we but maybe we need to take a vote, Don. Yeah, oh, right. we probably need to take a vote. And do Sarah and Tom have anything to say? Why don't we make a motion and then ask for comments? All right, I'll make a motion since I shot off my mouth here. Um, I'm, I move to approve the, uh, Chris, we only have documentation, Keith, of the sign verbally. Can you just sort of state again? I the, hate the to break, break it to you, Brent, but we can't control anything ex unless there's a health or safety issue involved. It could be 50 foot tall and we couldn't say anything. Well, Keith, would you state what you want to do so we can make a motion yeah. on it? Yeah. The, the sign I have is or that I'm proposing and that I submitted the application to the building inspector is two and a half by four, which is 10 square feet, which is under if I was if you were looking at wanting to follow the regulations for like the business side of things where it says no more than 12 square feet, oh, I'm under 12 square feet. That's right. So, so I want to understand. Bit. So Judy seems to be saying we can't even vote on this. Is that what you're saying, Judy? We can't. Well, I think we can we vote that we feel it's exempt. I mean, the issue is whether it's exempt or not. <laughs> Um, and well, if you def so, the, so the motion is that we grant an exemption. That we feel that Keith's sign is in, uh, is exempt from the town bylaws, okay. or the sign bylaws, huh. and the, the, and the friendly amendment, that, and we endorse his proposal for a sign that's less than twelve square feet. I, I emphasize the word endorse. Yeah. Okay. I'll second um, that. Okay, any further discussion? Well, we're, we're so, at Mary, did you, did you get the um, wording of the I, motion? I was just going to say, Tom, could you repeat the last bit that, that, um, that, that we, we it's exempt we, from the town we, bylaws and? And it's Keith will put up a sign and no, no more than 12 square feet. And the planning board endorses that proposal with emphasis uh, on it. Tom, I don't, I don't think we can put that restriction in. We could say we endorse it. It's I'm not, saying we're endorsing yeah. it, not, not right. yeah. prohibiting it or approving yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So that's the motion that we're going to endorse. Well, I, mean, I think we're appealing to Keith to do the right thing, although he yeah. has every freedom to not do the right thing. Right. So as a point of discussion, I think I, I, I think it might be good if, if this were ever to come. Is this something for after this meeting to again get a uh, town council opinion on whether we can regulate signs or things like that at all for agricultural uses? The, the building inspector can regulate the signs. We don't have to. It comes down to whether it's a structure or not. If you read the definition of structure in our bylaws, yeah. it's something that's firmly planted in the ground. Yeah. And 40A very specifically says we can't regulate Agricultural structures. Uh, and we're yeah. going to call for a vote. Yep. Right. 
I vote aye on the motion. I recuse myself, Judy. Aye. Tom. Aye. And Sarah. I have something personal come up. I had just one question and Keith, I'm sure you're within it. it that you come down the hill and go around the corner. There's plenty of sight lines that this won't be blocking. Is that correct? Correct. And it'll be off the, you know, out, it's, it's meets the setbacks of the away from the sideline that's also in the zoning bylaws. I'm going to follow those setback requirements. Thank you. Then I. Motion passes unanimously with that exception. All right. So it is um, 517. I'm going to open the hearing for the Waitley Water District. Pump house. Wayne, you want to tell us a story? We got, I think you got them. Did you get the drawing, the architect's drawings of the buildings? Right. I got the ones you sent in and I got the new ones after the, uh, the cemetery. Yeah, the, after we changed some stuff on the site plan. Right. All right. Yeah. Other than that, I mean, there's not much different. We changed some things to try meeting some of the stuff that the cemetery commission was worried about. Right. Or well, had you want, you want me to put, Wayne, what? you want me to go ahead and put that up for you? Um, you can. Yep. I, mean, I have it too. Who's easier too? Yeah, if, uh, I can share my screen also if you need me to. Go ahead then. Well, I'm okay. not ready, but. Okay. So uh, um, we'll start with the um, with the with the uh, with the site plan. So this is the the revised site plan in which we uh, took into account some of the comments from um, the. Uh, Cemetery Commission. So we're maintaining uh, the dirt lane. Uh, we previously had thought we would improve it, but we are just maintaining it. This is um, just for erosion control. So we would uh, maintain their, the existing apron and the dirt lane. And then we thought we would put in a gravel uh, apron here uh, for, for Wayne or another vehicle to park uh, for the pump station. Um, we also, we had the propane tank up here. Uh, it's a buried 500 gallon propane tank and we've moved it here so that it's easier access to fuel, to refuel it from, from the driveway. Um, we're also showing a new pole here uh, and an underground electric service. And um, I think the other change is that we are showing the water distribution. So this light colored water main here is the town's 16 inch uh, water main going up to the tank. Um, and this, so we're tapping off of that and boosting the pressure. And this is the distribution line into the water district. So we're showing that now under the, you know, driveway here rather than through the woods um, so we can limit disturbance to all that vegetation. Hey, yeah. So what's happening? Okay, so the propane tank, mm. one of the things they asked for was to- I got the email. Did be- um, um, agenda be able to fuel from the street but given the fact that they're probably going to fill this what a couple times a year right. what? Um, <laughs> maybe you know, I think it'd be almost impossible well very rare that there would be anything going on while they were the, uh, the rules. propane tank and the the rules are uh yeah the yeah. national yeah. fire protection rules are to have yeah. the propane tank yeah. has to be uh, 10 feet from a property line or the building. So it would have to be kind of in the woods 
in here, so it would be a difficult location, I think. Um, that's why we thought this was a better access. Does that help? Can you describe the gate? The gate. Do you have a drawing? Do you have a drawing? Of right. The gate? Um, we had. Let's see. The gate we originally proposed. Oh. Wow. Um, I thought I had a detail for the gate. But I'm not seeing it. That's odd. I'm, it was I'm a think, yeah. I'm thinking like a cattle gate. Yeah, that's what it was. I don't know. Wow, I'm embarrassed. It was it was a standard uh, cattle gate with um, I think three rungs. Um, Agway no sag. What's that? Basically, the Agway no sag. Yeah. 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 A little Yeah. So uh, I don't, it must be on a different set of plans or something. Is it, is it maybe on the, uh, the staff um, set? I'd have to um, I'd have to go onto my work computer and try to retrieve it. I can do that. Um, I think we all know what an agway sag, no sag gate is. If, is that, if, that, if that's what you're specking, that's what right, Wayne. We talked yeah. about it, and yeah, that's a pretty standard piece of fencing. Yep, yeah. it opens to the inside, so it wouldn't be. Sounds good to me. So I would like to request that we share the letter from the Cemetery Commission and go over there, I think, six points to confirm that at least we understand how those points are being addressed. Um, I can... Uh, Put that if you want. Lucy, you want to unshare? Uh, yes, sorry. <laughs> Let's see. And as we go through the points of the Cemetery Commission, I'd like some guidance as to whether um, the Water Department's response to those points from the Cemetery Commission require us, the Planning Board, to create conditions in our site plan approval document. There we go. You're not planning on doing any of the construction from on the cemetery property anyway, are you? Uh, yeah, we the where the water main would run would be on call it the if you're driving into the cemetery, it would be the say call it the right hand wheel track. Yep. Okay. Towards way over towards the fence. Okay, so you could, you're already planning on fencing that off whenever you do that work? Yeah, on the, the cemetery side, yeah. We'll put okay. up some kind of fence along that side. And I did see in the plan some specs for the typical kind of erosion control fencing that's used under this. 
Yeah. Uh, it's pretty flat in there. Where will the construction equipment be parked overnight? My guess is probably inside where the building is going to sit. Yeah, I mean, I don't, I, I can't say that for sure, but I, I can't see why. I mean, what's, what's actually going to be done coming up to Cemetery Road? I would say it's probably no more than a couple hours. I'm thinking half a day. Wayne, do you, you need to trench for the eight inch water main though coming out of the, the building? Yeah, that's and what I'm you, talking about. And that'll be on cemetery property, the trench? Yeah, it'd be probably, I don't know, I'd say probably four feet off the boundary line into the cemetery, three, three to four feet. Will it be in the, the bed of the existing road, the northern road? Yeah, that's as they call it. The northern road, if you drove in the northern road, will be, we put the water mains going to end up right about where your right, your passenger side wheels of the vehicle would be. Maybe even a little bit more towards the fence, the north end, the northern fence. So during the time when this trenching is occurring, the there will not be access on that road for cemetery purposes. No. Well, there there will be, but you have to come around from the other road. Okay. All right. Yeah, that road, no. And how long, like often when roads are dug up and the dig the dug up portions have to be left dug up for some number of days or longer, temporary, you know, plates or whatever are put over at the end of the workday so that vehicles can go back and forth. Do you, is there a need for such a thing and would that be anticipated? No, I'm, like I said, I'm guessing the trench would be opened up and then the road would be refilled and you'd be able to drive on it. I'd say probably no more than a half a day. It'll okay. be closed. So that's a within a within a day operation. Oh yeah. Wayne, who lays the pipe? Me and call it me and the highway department would. Keith will be involved? Yep. So we feel comfortable that the uh, part Point one is addressed and at two, so you're, you will be restoring the road to its present conditions afterwards. Yeah, if not a little better. I mean, I was talk, I talked with Neil and we just, you know, I mean, I still got to get a hold of the historical commission, whether, you know, I mean, we're not quite sure does he, if they want it back dirt like it is with the grass growing over the top of the gravel or do they want gravel put back again? You know what I mean? Just gravel. I think it, they, the historical commission would like it put back the way it is. Yeah, something what it looks like with gravel underneath and some dirt on loam or whatever on top so the grass can regrow. Presumably. Yeah. And I suppose the obvious question is taken care of that you're running a pipe underground and then vehicles like propane delivery trucks and others are going to be transiting over the surface and you know, the designs account for the kind of weight that might move over the pipes and not create compaction and damage to the pipes. Yeah, what, what I'm going to convey to the propane guy is because the cemetery commission doesn't want, they're worried about the truck having to go into the cemetery. So we're, I mean, that's part of moving the propane tank is we're gonna try it. We're gonna move it as far forward as we can. So when he comes to deliver it, he could park on just the apron and then ah. pull the hose in. Okay. I see, I see. Yeah, they, they pull their hose up to, to get to my propane tank at least that far. 
Right. That's yeah. That's why we're trying to move the tank closer. So the truck itself, the delivery truck doesn't have to drive into the cemetery. They could park on okay. that apron outside that picket fence and pull the hose in. Okay. Okay. Uh, all right. Yeah. So what about the boundary fence? Point three. I don't see it on the plans. Oh, it's yeah, we'll fix that. It's the again I call it a cattle fence. That wire the old pasture fence is what's up there. That's most of it's fallen down, but it'll get picked back up and fixed if not put in a new fence. Okay, so you're going to restore the boundary fence as requested. Yep. What, and what's this about? And it may want an additional fence demarcating the boundary. And I guess so that doesn't have, I don't know, yeah, is that an issue with Quan Quan? I guess what it was is Quan Quan just wants to make sure that because I guess a lot of people walk around near near dogs and stuff. They want to make sure there's something there so it's not just free range to walk into their land. Mm -hmm. So the boundary fence would do it. Right. The, the one you're restoring. Yes. Okay. All right. So that looks good. And then in the, there were, at least in the plans, the latest plans I looked at that does, does speak to insulation, acoustic and other insulation in the pump house. Um, so who's our, was it Lucy? Do you wanna just speak to that, sure. that topic? Sure, so um, the, the pump house will have two three pump skids one, one of the skids is for the domestic flow and the other skid is for fire flow. Um, and both skids, both three pump skids are called uh, design envelopes. And so they're ver vertical, three vertical multi-stage pumps and the controls all on, uh, on one skid. Uh, so it's like a package. And so the pumps are mounted on the skid. They're not mounted on the pump house floor. And that should help a lot with noise and vibration. Um, so these are, you know, the latest, the manufacturer um, says that these are, uh, uh, what the words are, they're mounted on skids. They, so they, uh, they offer renew, the manufacturer would state these offer re reduced noise and vibration uh, because they're, they're, um, you know, they're relatively uh, new technology. And you have foam, you have insulation in the building itself as well. Yep. Hey, number five, that's probably a non-issue. Yeah, so what did we, what's the issue about plowing in the winter time? Cemetery does not plow. Right. The town does not plow. Right. So Wayne, if you need to get in there, do you, are you planning? So what plowing during the pump? If yes and no, I guess. I mean, if there's, if we get a two foot snowstorm, I probably got to do something with it. But a normal three or four inch snowstorm, there's really no need to move it. Okay. Okay, well, I do think we should condition that. I think we need to condition everything that's not formally on the plan anyway, but um, in this case, I think the request not to plow onto the graves is reasonable. 
Absolutely. Yeah. Um, oh yeah, I mean, if if we had to, I mean, the only smart thing we need to do is is push it towards the fence. Yeah, and yeah. I think also their point about not turning around on the cemetery. I mean, yeah, I can't. I think you can, yeah, you can drive first. into the your your apron and then back out and out. Yeah, me personally, I can't see myself if I did when I have to go here. I, I actually can't see myself driving in and then actually parking in front of the building. I see either myself parking on the apron or just driving in and stopping and walking into the building. Okay. <laughs> so what about their point about snow blowing versus plowing does that seem feasible or would you envisage doing that there's a possibility yes of snow blowing if yeah. you're just requiring foot access you know park on the apron snow blow to to reach the that door to the pump house to get in and do inspections and maintenance and so forth sort of basically minimize snow operations unless there is some, um, you know, need to bring in larger pieces of equipment. Yeah. Does the town have a blower attachment for one of its tractors? Not Keith yet. is shaking his head no. <laughs> no. What, what, Keith, what are we plowing the uh, new sidewalks with? Uh, town contracts with a, <coughs> a private individual to do that. And um, there is some discussion in the future of the town purchasing their own sidewalk snowblower. And one of the things that I had mentioned to Wayne was it would be great if the, this building could potentially house it in the winter time. And um, we're, we're going along with that as a, as a possibility in the future. But at the moment we don't have any snow blowing equipment and it's done by a private con, you know, private person. Uh -huh. And is it feasible to even expand that person's contract to include this new booster pump house? I, from my standpoint, I guess that would be a, something that would have to be discussed between the water commissioners and the and that person. Okay. All right. Is so that we'll really make... necessary? It seems to me the plow could, as long as it's clear that the plow truck doesn't turn around on the grass and plows away from the graves and doesn't huh. block things. It I seems like the commission has given us good language right here for putting that condition into the this approval. Yeah. Okay. All right. So this is the, the spirit and the, the details of Point five are acceptable to the water um, water department, and you can you can do that. Okay, so then the last one is point six, which is sh shielding of the propane tank, and I don't think Judy mentioned that. Judy, I I'm oh. sorry, not Judy. Um, or Lucy. is it? Lucy, I meant yeah. I meant Lucy. Sorry, <laughs> no problem. Judy, Judy, why did you make that? <laughs> I was wondering who she was. Um, yeah, Lucy. Uh, so the propane tank is buried. Um, oh. Uh, oh, even in the new plan, it's buried. Yes, yeah. that was the plan. Okay, I knew it was buried in the old plan, but when it moved, I wasn't sure if it was still buried. Okay. Well, then, then that's not an issue, is it? Okay. All right, this looks good then. I think the, I think the elevations and the materials proposed are acceptable to the Historical Commission, although they haven't formally voted, but it has the appearance of a traditional building. Um, do you have a color? No. <laughs> <laughs> Do 
you have one you'd like? <laughs> <laughs> what? Bra- Something brownie unobtrusive, I guess. Hide it more? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, it's, you know what I mean? We're thinking some color that's going to make it blend in. Yeah. You know what I mean? I, it that's won't be camouflage. Like, yeah, it won't be a bright <laughs> yellow or something. <laughs> Probably brown would be the best camouflage, camouflage in there. Well, that's what we're kind of thinking. Brown and black roof or something? Or brown <laughs> on brown? I don't know. Just something, yeah, something that would hide it as much as it can. Yeah, so you're going to get brown screw down panels for the metal roof too, right? That I'm working. I was, I had a Donna talk called me the other day and I'm getting prices on certain types of metal roofing and asphalt shingles and that and the siding to see if we could fit into the budget what the historical commission would like to see the wooden clapboards and the standing seam metal. Boy, standing seam's way more expensive than screw down. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, otherwise, yeah, we were just thinking the, the regular, I call it tobacco barn metal roofing. Right. The regular screw down roofing. Recording in progress. Yeah, well, I put up metal buildings for a living for 10 years and uh, it's not as good as standing seam, but pretty darn close to it. But I would uh, definitely not let it be galvalume, unpainted galvalume. Yeah, no. no. Okay, do we want to um, take a look at the, the restrictions, uh, the, the letter from from Neil and uh, craft our conditions from that. Modify that. For Neil? Or the Cemetery Cemetery Commission. Commission. Oh, sure. So um, what I've, I have created a little bit of a site conditions template and I've put a, put that in Word in the OneDrive. And I can, if, if uh, Lucy, formerly known as Judy, stop sharing her screen. Yeah. Um, I could share this. We can fill in the details. All right. So let me share my screen. Do I have ability to share my screen? I do. Okay. All right. So... I took, in this case, I went from previous site conditions and anything in yellow can either be deleted or substituted. So um, I think we're gonna get rid of the landscape plantings. I assume we can leave in that the plan must receive approvals from all appropriate, just this is a sort of boilerplate from before. Yep. Seem good there? Yep. Uh, what about historical artifacts? Should we have a condition on that as we have <coughs> had in the past? This is a condition that was re- typically required by the Historical Commission and they haven't met to approve, but I can almost, I can guarantee that that will be a requirement. Okay, so we'll leave that in. Is that what you're recommending, Judy? Yes, yes. Okay, all right. So then, um, looking at the letters. So as we go through points one through five, six being taken care of, which of the points from the cemetery commission should we be focusing on? So do we need to condition on um, the protection during construction that the cemetery burial project plot should be protected with a temporary fence? Or is that already in the plan and we don't need to establish a specific condition about that? Lucy, was it covered in your narrative? Because it's 
I yeah, doubt so it. We are showing a limit of disturbance, but we're not showing a temporary fence. We could we could add that. Um, I think well, I, I think it'd be just that. easier. Yeah, I I think we could just say that the burial plot shall be protected with a temporary fence, or a, burial plots will be protected just, uh, from construction activity. Well, this is from the letter. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that that's perfect. Yeah. Okay. Very good. Neil is a that, good wordsmith. And that means the way, and he's just that the only time that's going to apply is when you put in the, the pipe itself, right, Wayne? But I was going to ask that you want this because I don't know how you long do you want to look at this thing. Do you want it while we're just working on in that road, or until the whole building's built? Just when you're on the road. I disagree, I think the whole time. So that the point is the construction equipment should not park or turn around on the graves. And I think, you know, you can have materials brought in and big propane tanks and everything. I, I think it should stay there. I concur with Judy. Agree with that also. From the start right. of the project to the end of the project, the fence should remain. Would, is that a proposed change in wording, Tom, or would the word throughout suffice? Throughout's fine. Okay. All right. I, so moving on to the access road. Um, and just take out the which will yep. surely be disturbed. Yep. Yep. Is that good? Yep. Okay. Uh, let's see. There should be restoration of the boundary fence. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. Maybe restoration or replacement. Let's see. Let me first get the original text in and then we can fix it. Here's this. There should be restoration of the boundary fence. Um, get rid of this phrase. Okay, now what should we change about that? The boundary fence should be restored. Uh, okay. no, no shoulds. Yep. The boundary fence should be restored. Or, or replaced. Or replaced in a manner I think just restore or replace is all we need. Okay. As long as it looks, as long as it looks okay. like it blends. Well. Right, Judy. It, it's it's the as long as that you said, Don, that we need to get in there somehow. The um, one that was there was pretty simple, right? So. So that. How about this? In, in a condition. How does that work for people? Good. Was that, I think you could take good? out the last bit about incursions. Okay, so you don't, we don't wanna record the intent of, okay, that's fine. I'm going to remove the highlighted portion. Go ahead, Don. Okay. Is that, are we happy with that? Yep. Okay. Moving okay. on. Heartburn. Okay, so far, Wayne's good with this. All right. Um, we don't need to, point four was about acoustic insulation, but we're satisfied with that and we don't need any additional conditions. Is that correct? Correct. Okay. Point five was about wintertime plowing. Okay. Um, so let's see. Well, maybe what I'm gonna do. If plowing is required. Okay. 
I'm listening, Don. If plowing, if winter time snow plowing is required. Yes. The snow shall be directed to the north. And the snow plow should back out of the driveway or the road. Oh, um, Wayne, what, what is at the top on the, uh, the, the west, the, the western side of the cemetery? What's at the top of the, the north road? Uh, is, it, is that just raw land or is there anything back there? Yeah, the, there's a, I don't, I don't know what it's called. Do you, do you need the shed? There's a shed back there? Yeah, there's a tool shed back there. So you couldn't, yeah. you, you can't plow up to the shed and bury the shed then? No, we're, it's we only go in about 20 feet. Yeah, the shed would be, I mean, all the way at the back of the cemetery, yeah. another and, but, 100 feet maybe? Another 100, 100 that much. feet. Yeah, yeah. They, don't, they don't use it anyway in the winter. I'm just wondering if there's an out of the way place on the west side of the cemetery or at the top of or along the north road that snow could be plowed and piled in a reasonable, a reasonable amount. I mean, where is that? So you're, so you're plowing in, going down the north road, heading to the west. Where's that snow going that's accumulating in front of the plow? Just the other side of the gate. So it will be left on the road. Yeah, yeah. They, don't, they don't plow it anyway. You can't leave a pile there, but you could sort of push it away from the road. Well, that's what I'm getting at, because the piles remain longer than the snow that's just on the ground. And that's bad. Why? Because they will need to get there in the spring. I'm not saying it's bad. I'm just saying that, that if you look at the top of your driveway when they plow it, the piles at the head of the driveway are there, up, can be up to a month longer. And if it's going to restrict access to the road, is there, is, can, can you, is there to the north, going north on the road, can, is there a spot that's wide enough the, the snow can be pushed off of the road. Uh, so and then, then back out. Road. I mean, where does that snow go? Is my question. So, I've been sort of half listening. Sorry, <laughs> I've been doing this editing. I'm wondering if the condition is really that during winter snow basically focus on the what we want not to happen so during winter snow removal vehicles shall avoid piling plowed snow on the burial plots to the south or further west and then leave it to the water department to figure out how to do their snow removal operations to achieve that objective so i'm thinking of deleting the highlighted portion here, even though Don, you started to give me that language. So I hope you can. Well, they, they specifically didn't want us to turn around in there. Yeah, yeah we I can add, maybe can add a sentence about, you know, the, the, the turn, turning around shall not be permitted. But what do you think about this so far before we deal with the turning around? Yeah, well, that's okay. But Tom's concerned about when you get as far as you're going to plow, that there's going to be a pile there. And I, just, I don't, do just don't see how that's going to be a problem. Do not block the road. And that's my question. Is there, is there, at that point where the pile is there, can you turn the wheel to the right and just push it off of the road? Is there space there to do that? No, you'd be right against the fence. You're right against the fence. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. So basically, well, we just have to say without blocking the access road and leave it up to them to figure out how to do it. Right. Okay. 
So where do we add will it without blocking the access road? With, well, west on the cemetery access road without blocking it. Okay. Or further west on the cemetery road. Um, the, how about making it a separate sentence? The cemetery access road must not be blocked. And then snow removal vehicles must not turn around during plowing operations? In the cemetery. Must yeah, that's right. Turn around in the cemetery. Right. Although I think they could drive up the apron and then back, back up to the west and then drive out. But that yeah, to me is not, and could do a Y turn, not a, not a three sixty. I'm thinking we go if the snow's not deep, deep. I can just instead of pushing in, I just back in and push out. Yeah. Drag it. Well, the only time you'd probably plow it anyway, Wayne, is if you had two feet in there, right? Right. Because, like I said, I can't. I don't see myself needing to really drive in there and all the way up into this building. You know, what I mean, I can, I can park on the apron and walk the 40 feet to the building. Okay. Well, the other thing that would be possible is if we did have a big snowfall and you had to leave it at the end, we could just bring in a front loader to uh, move it off. Yeah, take a couple, take the scoops out to take the bank out of the way. Right. Okay, well, we'll leave that up to you as how do you do that, but I think, I think that's good the way it is. So we're happy with this language. I am. highlighted. Okay. Uh, and I think, I think that covers all the points raised by the cemetery commission. Is there any other commission, any other condition that the, the planning board like to see? Oh, in our last conversation about this, there was a question of um, priority over uh, burial versus maintenance or deliveries to the pump house. Do we need to say something that, or who, who gets the priority? Um, if there's a burial taking place, you would hope common sense would prevail and they wouldn't be running again, delivering gas at, while that's happening. But do we need to codify that? Huh. I, I think that is really overkill. The, the chances of them delivering propane when a burial was going on on that side of the cemetery are very slim. I think 99% of the burials are on weekends. All right, so I'm going to try to make I'm going to make um, a motion that we approve these conditions as written. Um, scroll. Yeah, you need to scroll okay. back down. Okay. So scroll back up to the top. I mean. Okay. The data on so, that. So the applicant name is the Waitley Water Department. Or, yes. Or commission. No, uh, Wheatley Water Department, I, I think. Oh, I'm sorry, what was that, Lucy? Uh, that's what we have is Wheatley Water Department. Okay. And what is the site address? I've seen it as 7 or 9 North Road. Uh, 7 North Street. Yeah, North Street. Okay. All right, so that's the top. Is this good? Everyone see what they need to see? Let me just make this. Can I quickly interject on one comment I would make since I'm the one that issues street numbers? Um, that, that number is basically tied to the fact that it's Quan Quant property. Um, I probably will issue a, a correct, the correct number for, which I don't have at the moment, just I just thought of this. Um, should there ever need to be um, police, fire, EMS, 
dispatched to that location that will need the correct address. That's all I will say. Okay. I think that this is the operative address on the date we're approving and there isn't another one. And all the public hearing went out for 7 North Street, all the ads. That, that's fine. I'm just pointing out that at some point in time, a proper number will get issued for the building. And if we need to, we can, any documents come of that, we could put several, um, previously 7 North Street. I mean, if you in any kind of deed or anything, that's how you would take care of it. All right. Any other comments? Any comments by the public? Okay. I, I, I'm going to move that we accept the list of conditions as written. Second. And I'll second that or third that. We never closed the public hearing. <laughs> Thank you, Judy. <laughs> okay, it's uh, 6.03. I'm gonna close the public hearing. We probably should have done that before we did the conditions, right? Yes, but a little late now. <laughs> Better late than never, okay. I'm now gonna make the aforementioned uh, motion. Do I have a second? Second. Thomas seconded. Uh, roll call vote. Don, yes. Brant? Yes. Judy? Yes. Tom? Yes. And Sarah? Yes. The motion passes unanimously. Okay. And Mary, this document is in the OneDrive. Okay. <clears throat> We approved the conditions. Did we approve the site plan? And I know that was implicit, but. Well, let's make a motion that we approve the site plan. So move. Second. With, with the conditions just approved. I second that with that amendment. You got that, Mary? Yes. Okay. Brent? Yes. Don, yes. Judy? Yes. Tom? Yes. Sarah? Yes. Motion passes unanimously. Thank you very much. All right, so we're late for the continuation of the public hearing of the sovereign buildings. Thank you. Thank you, Lucy. Thanks, Lucy. Thank you. Should I be teeing up another one of those site conditions things for sovereign builders? I think we've got a long ways to go. Okay, all right. So I'll take that as a no. Uh, hello, I just wanted to check my microphone. Oh. Okay, Chris, go ahead. You all hearing me well? Yep. Yes. Hello. My name is Christopher Carney. I'm here on behalf of Todd Salura of Sovereign Builders to discuss the project off road in Whateley, Massachusetts, across from Tom's Hot Dogs. And I'm having trouble hearing you guys, if you wouldn't mind. We're not saying very much at this point. Okay, very good. Um, so there's been a couple of developments since the last time we got together. Namely, we were able to meet with the select board and uh, discuss the driveway permit. At that meeting, it was the opinion of the select board that a driveway permit does not apply to this project. Uh, due to its orientation on a uh, mass DOT jurisdiction roadway. Uh, so we have an email to state that, uh, but I believe that was sent off to Don to review and he can attest to the fact that that was the outcome of that. Uh, I 
don't think I got that, but if you would send me another one. I got it. Okay. Okay, I will forward that along and I can share it on screen if you'd like to, to that be helpful. I don't think it's necessary. Okay, very good. Uh, so then the, the next development was a lot of discussion around the uh, reduction of the road width in order to save some significant trees out on this project. Uh, namely, there was a beech tree and a hemlock tree that were of some concerns to the board. Uh, so I'm, I'm skipping through the overview of the project because I believe we're all pretty familiar with this project at this point. Um, the true two specimen trees here are shown now on this plan, um, one being a hemlock, and one being a beech. This would be the location of the hemlock uh, just off the edge of the proposed pavement and in a line of proposed pine trees that would go to help replace this lost hemlock tree. Uh, the next tree we can look at is the beech tree. That was definitely a specimen tree. Uh, the conservation, when they walked, they found some bear claw marks. And also notice that this beech tree appears to be somewhat disease resistant, which is uh, nice to see. Uh, so the location of the tree is shown here. And as we move um, to the west, you can see this red line would represent the reduced width of the driveway. Uh, I believe the fire chief in Waitley uh, okayed a, a width reduction to 17 feet in width. That's what you're seeing on screen. That'll allow for fire access to the building without any trouble. Uh, and 17 feet will allow for one car to travel on this, I guess we'll call it a one lane road with a pull off lane um, for any uh, oncoming traffic. Again, because of the light traffic demands for this type of project, we don't really anticipate two-way traffic often. Um, Chris, um, the, the Conservation Commission also mentioned two large white pines at the entrance to the property. Yeah, and th those are located in this area, and unfortunately, those would not be able to be saved. They're right. too close to the retaining walls in the... Uh, um, the new wetland crossing where construction will just impact them. They're really right on the edge of this existing waterway. So unfortunately those would be lost. Uh, because of the nature of the project and the width of the road and this being a highly trafficked road, maintaining the 24 feet of width, especially at the entranceway and as we move past the retaining walls is really important. There would be nowhere for a car to pull off uh, this road if the retaining walls aren't spaced apart enough to allow two cars to pass each other. So really we're forced to keep this roadway width at 24 feet in the entrance way in order to allow for one way traffic with a pull off lane. So essentially two way in the entrance and then one way as we move through the site. I think it's the best we can do to allow for a safe entrance to the site where cars don't stack up. And also as you're taking this 90 degree turn, you don't wanna uh, be in an oncoming traffic situation with someone coming out of the driveway. It's good to have two dedicated lanes at this entrance for safety. So that, that would be the reason those white pines located approximately here and here are, are not able to be saved. Um, uh, we've also received comments from uh, Mass DEP and their comments, uh, as well as con comments from Conservation Department, uh, have caused some uh, ripple effects to the site. Notably, this infiltration basin, uh, portions of it will be allowed to remain within this 200-foot riparian zone, but portions of it will have to be removed and modified uh, in an alternate location for infiltration will need to be found on the site. Uh, so I'll get back to up of the basin. As we look at this stormwater basin, you're gonna notice that it has um, entrances here and here, as well as entrances from roofs here and here. So the way this, the, the environmental side of this uh, will play out is that any runoff from the driveway will be allowed 
to be infiltrated in this 200 foot riparian area. But runoff coming from what they call the purpose of the site, uh, being the buildings in this upper paved area, infiltration from these areas will need to be accomplished outside of the 200 foot riparian area. And uh, I, that is not shown on this sheet. Does that mean that the size of the infiltration basin can be shrunk? Yes, this, this will be probably half the size or maybe a third of the size. So this lower portion is very important. Uh, you're gonna notice this 167 elevation right here. This is an important design constraint for us. Um, we needed to get stormwater to flow from the crest of this wetland crossing and into a basin. And that we, we tried to get this basin as far away as possible from the wetland area. We were able to site it outside of the 100 foot riparian zone and substantially outside of the 100 foot wetland buffer. Uh, but because of test pits and estimated seasonal high groundwater, this was the a place and the site that allowed for 167 foot detention basin elevation and two feet of separation to estimated seasonal high groundwater as required. Uh, and then we ran minimum pipe slopes to this manhole here and minimum pipe slopes to this catch basin here and minimum cover over the road. So um, the reason that's important is that this, the location of this basin, we are forced into this area. There's no other place on site that can accommodate the driveway runoff. Uh, the way conservation bylaws and especially the Massachusetts bylaw uh, statutes read for this is that without going into too much detail, anything required for the driveway to access the uplands will be allowed inside the 200 foot riparian area. Anything uh, outside of the driveway is re uh, required to be outside of the 200 foot riparian. So we'll be cleaning up some of this grading that you see in the back so that that will not uh, be here. And I'm, I'm still reviewing with the applicant where this additional stormwater will be, will be detained. Uh, I think the resolution to this will be the loss of at least one of these buildings. Um, reviewing it with Todd, I, I think this front building makes the most sense to lose as it's closest to the abutting neighbor. So it, it will increase the buffer to the abutter to the south. Uh, and also preserve, this will be the uh, nicest looking building on site which is blocked by this lower story building. So it will um, be a better appearance. So this building will substantially get replaced with a long, narrow uh, bioretention area, likely, that will accommodate stormwater. There is also a, a strong chance this bioretention area will be lowered in elevation uh, as low as possible or slightly expanded. So fundamentally, the same general plan uh, but this basin will be, you know, shrunk to approximately 40% of its size. And one of these buildings will likely be lost. Uh, the good news, though, is that from the reduction of width, uh, this basin will be reduced further in size. And this beech tree that was of um, concern for both planning, zoning, and conservation, it should be able to be retained on this project. Would it be possible to move the driveway once you're east of the beech tree to move it further to the north, away from the lot line? Um, I, 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 it could be possible. I'm, I'm not sure what, what we're hoping to gain from that. More of a buffer for the abutters. So, um, also the ability to plant larger trees in there. Yeah, as a screen. Uh, yeah, so these are white pine trees proposed and it's an eight foot buffer. And at this point, I think I'd have to just say that uh, the driveway permit does not apply. So no buffers to the property line are required based on the statutes and, and bylaws in Waitley. There are no planting buffers required. There is a, a, a stockade fence requirement, which we meet. And these additional plantings here are all uh, done by Todd in order to reduce the impacts of this property 
but they are not required by your bylaws. This driveway no, could- No, but the planning board has the ability to require screening and the discretion yep, to and so determine what kinds of screening and- sure. So the screening we've selected is of opacity as required by your, your bylaws. I'll head to C4 in the call out arrow uh, for this stockade fence. This is straight from Waitley zoning bylaws that you require a six foot tall stockade fence with 75% opacity. So we are meeting the uh, regulatory requirements for this. I understand, but uh, the question was fairly simple. Could the, could the driveway east of the beech tree be shifted a little bit to the north? Uh, the, the radius is required to shift it to the north. Uh, it, you could shift it, then you would shift it back uh, in this direction in order to retain the building in its current location. So uh, there's a lot of changes that could be made on this site, but I'm just going to uh, continue to say that this conforms to all Waitley zoning requirements and planning requirements. The minimum planning and zoning requirements. The zoning requirements, correct. Out of curiosity, if you're going to lose one of the buildings, do you anticipate increasing the square footage of either of the other buildings to compensate or it's simply lost in that sense, economic opportunity to Todd? Um, after, after I get, after I give you a brief introduction on that, I'll let Todd speak to that. Uh, there had been okay. discussions making one of them two story potentially, but we haven't discussed any situation where the footprints of any of the buildings would increase in size. No. Todd would like to add anything. So until we know uh, how much of the building needs to be devoted to the drainage, it's really tough to answer that. The goal is to maintain the square footage that we have. I don't know if we can lengthen the three-story building towards the north. I don't, I don't think that makes sense because we need to. We, so the likelihood is no, but uh, and, and it would be very unlikely that we would that I would decide to uh, increase the height of any of the other two two buildings. I, I, I that's that's doubtful and not not likely. But if it's possible to lengthen the three story building to the north, I would consider that. But I think we're probably not going to have an opportunity or it's not going to be not going to make a whole lot of sense to yeah. uh, to increase the size. So I think we're going to reduce the size by the amount that we need to devote to the detention basin. So I understand you're going back to the Conservation Commission on the 16th. Is it due to the you'll you'll have the retention basin? Yeah, we'll have plan that. then. Yes, we'll we'll have that plan for for that meeting. Uh, well, we also need to run uh, mass. DEP has some comments that we need to address and they'll be addressed in this revised plan set and they'll have an opportunity to re-review this project and issue any comments or let us know if those comments have been closed. Uh, so, so Chris, under understanding that what's, what's required by the, the bylaws, um, are you willing to explore um, knowing that you're not required to move, move the road or is that off, that's not awesome. something so the road has already been moved. Um, it, right now, uh, Waitley bylaws are written where two-way traffic is required to have two lanes, 12 feet in width. Uh, there's nothing in the bylaws for any buffers to the south. Again, uh, Todd has, has reached out and, and gone, in my opinion, above and beyond to provide that planted buffer in addition to the stockade fence. And he's also paying for a significant redesign for the reduction in width of the driveway from 24 feet to 17 feet. All of these things are uh, in excess of the requirements of the Waitley zoning bylaws. So, um, I think you need I, to go back and read the site plan oh, I, approval I think, process. And remember, the planning board has the ability to require screening and to decide the kind of screening. And we also are the ones who have to, who would be waiving, waiving the zoning bylaw. Um, so it could be that there's some give and take here. Um, so, so the but, plants that were selected for the southerly boundary are the Irish U's that were uh, 
you know, the plant species and type have been carefully selected to match comments from, I believe, this board. Uh, the white pines were added in addition to plantings that they were not requested by any board. They were added in order to provide more screening. Um, this is in a commercial I, district and, and I, I appreciate that. Thank you. Adequately screen. Well, it sounds like you're, you don't have a, we had better continue this till we have, till we have a more definitive plan, but I suspect you would like us to express approval of the driveway width. Yeah, we're forward. wondering right now, that's the purpose of this meeting. Exactly, Judy, thank you. Um, that we do not want to redesign down to 17 feet and then have it be required to be back to 24 feet, right? So we're hoping that 17 feet was what was recommended by the Waitley Fire Department. Uh, that's what we changed it to. So we're hoping that you can give a informal blessing that this uh, roadway design can conforms to your requirements. Actually, the fire chief said he could go 16 feet, but. I, I'll reduce to 16 feet, that, that's fine. I think that'll still allow for a shoulder wide enough. Grading on the outside of this road shouldn't be too substantial. That'll allow for a car to pull off. So I'll head to 16 feet for a final width. I'll express the personal view that um, regarding the, the road and the discussion around moving the the road to accommodate additional screening. Um, I don't feel strongly compelled to do that. This is just, you know, one of five members of the board. Uh, I feel comfortable with what you've presented in terms of the revised roadway design today. Brett, um, the CONCOM felt that if they were to narrow the road near the beach, that that would make the the uh, saving the beach uh, more positive. It, it, it would help in uh, saving the beach tree. Yes, that's right. So I'm, I'm uh, making, saving the beach. I think I'm really glad to see that that's happening. I'm comfortable with the, the narrowing of the road. And if the road can be further narrowed to reduce the chance of root compaction or other um, adverse impacts on that beach that we're doing our darndest to save. Uh, I'm all for that. I'm just simply stating that I personally don't feel the need for moving, you know, making the road curvy so that just beyond the beach, it curves up to the north and then back to the south, yeah. where the, th in theory, to provide additional screening for the abutter. I don't you know, I know there's, so I'm just expressing my personal view as one of the members of the board that this plan with the narrowing of the road is satisfactory to me. All right. I so, think they've asked for an informal assessment of whether we approve of the narrowing or not. And I would move that that uh, as long as the fire chief is comfortable with 16 feet that we agree to waive that requirement in the zoning bylaw, the, the wider road requirement in the zoning bylaw. Uh, can I ask a question of Chris? Chris, you mentioned that the, the, by redesigning the road, it's already a burden. How, how much more of a burden is it to, to move the road further from the southern boundary if you're already doing that stretch that's in red? So um, really, it's not much more of a burden. I, I would hope that we just leave with a, a good idea of what you'd like. The reason we moved it to the south is to save the beech tree. Um, when, when designing these types of roads, you, you, you can't really run a successive amount of curves one right after another after another. It's just not practical, especially with the type of U-Haul vehicles uh, coming up and down this road. We don't want this to be an S-shaped driveway or multiple S's. So we chose to move it to the south to save the beech tree. Uh, and that, that makes sense here. Um, running it to the north and then back to the south, I, I, I don't think it'll really have an impact on the amount of 
offer. So I guess to answer your question, um, it's not a huge burden. It's, it's no burden to us. We're happy to make these plans look at, as required, uh, but I don't think it functionally gains anything substantial. There might be some site, site issues to site line. And it would only it would only move north for a short distance, and then it would have to. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Or it could it could yeah. only move it? I I shouldn't say would. It could only move north for a, for for a short distance. Yeah. And as a, a point of clarification on this driveway, we're going to have to call it a one lane driveway with a pull off road for one way traffic. Uh, it's it's a bit counterintuitive, but we don't see anywhere in your bylaws that allow for a waiver of the requirements in your bylaws. So I, mean, I think if you look at the site plan review process, you can see that the planning board has the ability to waive bylaws at, their, at its discretion when it feels it's in the general public interest. It's something we do quite, I mean, not routinely, but it's certainly not unusual. We did the same thing for a subdivision where Grant is living. Because both cul-de-sacs are 16 foot. If there's no uh, issue from the board, we would like to call this a, a one-way road in order to avoid any possible confusion down the road. We don't want you stepping outside of uh, potential jurisdiction. I don't think you need to worry about that. We will waive the 24 foot requirement. And if you want to call it one way road, fine, but I don't think it's an a motion and an, uh, a vote. Yeah, we already talked about that. There's a motion on the table already. All right. It hasn't, hasn't been seconded. So the motion was to reduce the road width to 16 feet uh, to save the beech tree. I'm happy and to second that. And, and if, the hemlock, but the hemlock's not 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 in in uh, this part of this discussion because it's not necessary. Correct? It's not possible to save it. Yeah. No, it is possible to save it. Didn't, didn't I understand that, Chris, that the hemlock can be saved? No. In this plant set, no, the hemlock is not being saved in this. Uh, I think there's a, a number of issues uh, with the hemlock that should be considered, is one of them being the woolly adelgid is, is a known disease to attack hemlocks. I think uh, redesigning the site to save a disease-prone tree uh, is, is not a design choice we would like to make. Any further discussion on the motion on the table? Call roll call vote. Don, yes. Brant? Yes. Judy? Yes. Tom? Yes. Sarah? Yes. I didn't hear that? Yes. Yes. Okay, the motion passes unanimously. So at this point, we're going to continue the hearing. Um, does anybody from the board have a feeling you want to do it for a month? Well, on the 29th, we, we have Three River Road. And we were discussing whether we have an, an appointment with Peggy Sloan that night or not. And, but I think we could probably postpone that if that's a problem. Okay, is so what's that, the 29th? 29th of June is the, the, re, the next regular meeting. Is that okay with you, Chris? Yes, that'll work for us, thank you. Okay, so the meeting is continued till 5.15, Judy? No, we have River Road at 5.15. Um, seven, six o'clock? Six o'clock is okay with me. Chris? Yes, that's fine. Six o'clock on the 29th. Okay. Uh, I had one more quick comment. Uh, Ms. Cooper had, had requested a development impact statement at the prior meeting. I just wanted to let her know that we have accomplished it and, and it has been sent out for review. That's awesome. Thank you. You address 
line by line. And many of the things were not applicable to you, but it answered some other questions. Thank you very much. Our pleasure. Yeah, I actually do want to echo Sarah's remarks. I was really, I, I, that, that was very well done. Thank you. Well, thank you for your time tonight and I'll see you again next month. Thank you. Thank you all. Have a good night. 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 Right. We already took care of Brookledge Sugar House. Anything else that we haven't anticipated? Yes, this is Chris from, oh, sorry to interrupt. This is Chris from Berkshire Design Group. We just wanted to formally submit our site plan approval for 424 State Road. Um, I can give a brief overview of the project and, and share my screen or Please whatever do. process. Please, Please do. do. Okay. I'll share my screen right now. How's that? Can you guys see the screen? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Excellent. So just to get us organized or oriented, I just brought up the Google Street View uh, to show everybody exactly where we're talking about. So this is the Sugarloaf Estates. Um, there's three, it's a three building condominium site. Um, one used by uh, or formally used, this is building B, formally used by, uh, as a medical office. This is the building that we are looking to convert into a uh, retail marijuana facility. Uh, now that we know where we are, I'm gonna switch back over to the plan so I can show you the site plan. Um, but just looking at this image, the idea really is to leave the exterior of the site uh, pretty much as it is and, you know, just convert the interior of the space, 3,100 square feet uh, into this retail marijuana facility. I'll switch over to the plans. So we did our, uh, our neighborhood context plan. I'll try to zoom in here a little bit, but you know, we went through all the steps to, to show that there's no uh, conflicting uses within the 500, 1,000 foot zones. Um, in this plan, uh, the building that's shaded in black is building B, which is the white building you saw previously on that Google image. Uh, this is the building that we're talking about as the potential store. So zooming out, I'm using my cursor. This is building B again. This is uh, the potential store area. Um, and really what we've done with the site plan is we've drawn in some lines to highlight the existing parking lot. There's ample parking as is, um, lighting is ample. Um, so really there's, there's no exterior changes proposed other than some re-signage on the building um, and potentially a ground lit sign, uh, exterior sign. Um, We understand that there's a, a 5,000 square foot limit to retail uh, marijuana use in Waitley. Uh, so the client anticipates using about 3,100 square feet of this building for that purpose and then subleasing out uh, the remaining space to another client. Uh, we do have, let's see, the uh, the host community agreement. I understand that the select board is meeting tomorrow uh, to make a decision on that. So we fully anticipate having that 
submitted by the time of the next hearing. It is not included in this particular application uh, just because it's not quite ready yet, but we will formally submit that um, as soon as we get that signed copy. Um, there's a full traffic report involved um, in this application. We do understand that there's some potential traffic, uh, some bottlenecking on 116 with UMass. Um, it's fully explained in really good detail in the traffic report, so I won't go over all of that now. Um, but it is something we're aware of and have taken into consideration. The rest of these plans are really just, this shows the existing survey of the site and the existing architectural plans of the buildings as they are today. And the remainder of this document is really the remainder of the digital application itself. Um, so I won't go through all of that, but are there any initial questions? Does the um, survey have meets and bounds on it? Couldn't see. Let's take a look. Yeah, good. Okay, yes, it does. Yep. And that's stamped as being, yep, okay, yep. that's the stamp. The survey, okay. the survey is stamped and the architectural drawings are stamped and the civil plans are all stamped. Uh, this is was the all, traffic, sorry. I'm sorry, this, this also just, by the way, was submitted to the ZBA on uh, the 15th of this month or 14th of this month <clears> as well. <throat> so it's currently under review by the ZBA. You have a question about traffic, Judy? Yeah, I'm just curious whether the traffic study incorporated the new use in, in Building A, which is also a marijuana retail facility. In Building A, um, I, I can't answer that question. I know that it, well, it was most certainly incorporated into the use of Building B. Um, and you know the, the amount of time that we expect folks to stay within the store, you know, being approximately ten minutes, ten to fifteen minutes. Um, I can't tell you right now without going through the report if we if Building A is taken into consideration. Uh, I'm I'm positive that it is. Okay. Are you considering Old State Road to be the main entrance and egress? Um, it, that would be the that idea. Secondary. Uh, it, well, I think I think uh, routes five and ten, or I think it depends on where you're where you're coming from. Um, You know, I think a lot of I th I do think a lot of the traffic will be coming from Old State Road because that is not at all a good sight line to exit. Yep. So I mean, that's my very much a concern. I mean, I can understand emergency egress and a secondary egress. For me, a preferred entrance and egress is definitely off at least. Egress is definitely on to five and 10, but yes, I am very much looking forward to reading your traffic study. Okay. I should, I should warn you that the planning board had significant concerns when building A was approved about the volume of traffic. And at that point there was very low traffic usage in building B. Uh, my personal take on that is having watched uh, what happened with Rise in, uh, on the Hadley Amherst area, um, they had a cop out there for 
a month every day and I never saw their parking lot more than half full. So I think that everybody is looking at what happened in Northampton and assuming the same thing's gonna happen at other places. And so far in this area, it has not. None of the, none of the places in Amherst are uh, overwhelmed like Northampton is. Right, and in, in the application, it does describe in detail that, you know, the, the applicant is, understands this traffic concern um, and, uh, you know, is willing to work with local police details to figure out, you know, it, what is necessary in those initial weeks. Um, but, you know, just as what was just said, it the trend seems to be that, you know, because these are becoming, dispensaries are becoming more common, the, you know, the, the lines and lines out the door and the big sort of hype um, isn't quite as much as it was a year ago or a little longer. Um, Chris, this is, uh, this is Jared Glansberger on, uh, on my phone, unfortunately. I'm driving back from, uh, from Wazy now. Sure. Um, so, so yes, the, I think the expectation is that we would, um, we would have a, a police officer um, stationed uh, outside uh, for the, you know, certainly for the first few weeks. And it would be, I think the way we have it phrased is it would be at the discretion of the Waitley police as to when that detail would need to stop. Um, so it won't be us, you know, with a predetermined uh, number of weeks, it would be, you know, as, as uh, you know, Waitley PD decides that, you know, um, uh, that as Don, I think, was, was saying that, you know, that there is no longer a need for it. Um, and there may never be a need for it. You know, we may not see the kinds of crowds, um, as I think uh, Chris and Don were both saying, that, you know, that, that these crowds may not come. I'm not concerned about the quantity. I'm just concerned about any traffic trying to come out of there. And you're coming right below the crest of a hill that people do not mind the speed limit. So any turn with a road across the street in an intersection. I mean, it's just my attend another business that's down that road a couple times a year. I generally go through the parking lot. It hasn't been bad in the last year, but it is a time of the day. That is a very dangerous <coughs> place to get out of. But again, yay, traffic study. Yeah, yeah, and, and you know we certainly want to make it. Um, we want to make sure that it's safe and that you know people are, are accessing it in a, in a reasonable way. Um, so that's something that we will certainly pay attention to. Okay, do we want to set a date for a uh, public hearing? No, but we have to. Not the 29th. <laughs> yes, not the 29th. Um, I would say that the July regular meeting. Okay. All right, so that looks to be July 27th, the last Tuesday of July. Yes. Okay. Five fifteen. Sounds good to me. Um, have you sent electronic uh, forms to uh, email them to me yet? I have not yet, but I'll do that um, after this meeting and we'll drop off the hard copies tomorrow. Okay. Excuse me, Chris, could I just have your last name to go with this? Sure. It's, it's Schufler. Oh, okay. S I, I just, we've been dealing with many Chris's lately. I want to make sure which one you were. <laughs> okay. Gotcha.
So this is 424 State Road. 424 State Road, and we're going to do a public hearing at 515. I'm starting to put little files, guys, in our uh, in our folders for the various meeting dates, with notes about what we've put on the agenda for those dates. Thank you. Yeah, I'm just uh, looking at uh, Google Street View, um, and that is ugly. <laughs> Ugly intersection there. Okay, anything else anybody would like to talk about today? I entertain a motion to adjourn. I'll second that. Okay, roll call vote. Don, yes. Brant? Yes. Judy? Yes. Tom? Yes. Sarah? Yes. This meeting is adjourned.